Ladies and gents, today we are looking at our own voice booking system and what I've done is I've used Vappy for this and let's actually just get straight into it. I'll show you the demo uh, so you can see it in action and then for the next couple videos I'll show you step by step on how to build this. So let's get to it. All right, so let's see how this looks like I'm about to call. And just press dial, speaker. Hello. Hello, this is Ellen. You've reached Henrik's agency. How can I help? Hey, Ellen, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How can I assist you today? Are you looking to book a consultation with Henrik? Uh, yeah, I am. Can I book an appointment maybe on, say, uh, 11 a.m. Uh, this Thursday? Just a sec. Um, it looks like Henrik is already booked at 11 a.m. Would you consider times like 10 a.m. or 12 p.m. that are open? I'm not sure if 10 a.m. is good for me. What do you think? Well, 10 a.m. or 12 p.m. are the available time slots, but I mean, it's really up to you and your schedule. Should we go with the 12 p.m. slot then? Yeah, that might give me some time to go to the gym. Great. Exercise is always a good way to start the day. Before I book this consultation for you, could you please provide me your name and email address? It's for confirmation purposes. Yeah, of course. Can I give you my email first? Absolutely. Please go ahead and provide your email. Yeah, so my email is uh, fred at gmail.com. Okay. I've got your email as fred at gmail.com. Could I now have your name, please? Yeah, sure. My name's Fred. One moment. There you go, Fred. The appointment has been successfully booked for you at 12 p.m. this Thursday. You will shortly receive a confirmation email on fred at gmail.com. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, oh, perfect. Thank you, Ellen. See ya. So now that you've seen this in action, let's actually have a look at uh, the theory behind this whole setup, how I got here and uh, I'll give you like a brief overview of the theory there. And yeah, comment below if you would like me to in the next video go through the make.com setup. So let's go through the Vapi setup first. Uh, and what you would need is a Vapi account. So you log in and what I've done is just create an assistant. I've actually taken off the first message uh, so this is just a personal preference. So when I'm calling, um, I would like to say hello first, but you can also do it uh, the other way around. So you could give it a first message right there. So what I'll do now is I'll actually just scroll through my whole prompt so you can see it and have a read of it yourself. I'll go through the main parts of the prompt, but not the whole thing. So I've got the role, I've got the task. This is all in markdown format. I've got the specifics. So give us um, and some emotional prompting there, context, and then some examples of the conversation and then some notes in the end for the things that I found it had trouble with. For the role, you're actually telling it what skills it has and for the task, you're telling it it's, it's actual job. Uh, so what is it meant to do? And then here we've given it steps. There's two main steps that you, we care about are building out because we use two functions in this setup. We are using the step three, which is the check availability function. Well, so I'll show you guys that when we get up to this tab here. And then the sixth line here, which is uh, book the appointment function. Then we've got the specifics uh, here, just like we're telling it how to speak. And then the, the thing is here is that we need to tell it to steer the conversation back on topic if a user asks the weird questions or anything that's off topic. and uh, what I said here was steer the conversation back on track using your role and task as guidelines. 
and this is vital to Henrik's career and he greatly values your attention to this. Uh, so you've like given her a pat on the back or the AI uh, to do this job uh, well. So uh, works for Henrik uh, in an AI and automation consultant and a tutor. And then our offer and our system. So like what are the two main things that we are doing? We're checking availabilities and booking appointments and I'm currently working on a cancel update and uh, remove a booking uh, part and just giving us some examples of how to respond and some extra notes and here's something like ensure that the time slot chosen by the user is actually available so this will be important and then let's go to the transcriber now so we've done with the prompt uh, so I've used deepgram nova2 I chose en as the language I've hooked up my 11 labs account and I'm using Joanne here Mm, I didn't change I didn't change any any settings here at all uh, in this and I've turned off the background sound so when you do call her it doesn't come up with the office noises for the functions this is probably the most important part I've got the first one called the check availability function and I'll show you guys how to write this in a sec so I'll just run through how they look like and just copy them uh, check availability use this function to steal Henrik's av availability and then in our times uh, properties like one of the properties is times and I've called it times again so you're telling the AI what to look for and the user's requested appointment time so that's what the what the AI will be looking for and then I'm giving it some format and this is our webhook that we are using in make.com and I've done the similar thing for the book and appointment except here what we need is the the name so the user's name, the email, the user's email, and then the requested time. So whatever time they actually said, I said at the start. So at the start of the call, I think I said 11 a.m. this Thursday. So that would then get sent to make.com as 11 a.m. this Thursday. And then we have uh, stuff going on there to help us convert that into what we need for our API calls. And yeah, then you just put your make.com set up here and so in the functions, I think it was in the functions. Yeah, enable and call function. I'm actually get rid of that for now. Uh, Vapi is still working on improving this specifically. Let's publish that. So let's look at the theory behind all this and how it all came together. So I initially tried to use uh, Calendly for building out the solution and Calendly had a fatal flaw in it that uh, you can't actually book an appointment via an API call or an API endpoint, which defeats the whole purpose of uh, the whole booking appointment system, right? So what I did is I researched a couple uh, calendar booking options and I found cal.com to be the best one uh, because it integrates with Google Calendar, for example, and I just found it, found it to be way better, A, because of price, it's free. <laughs> and uh, two, I really like the, uh, like the UI is feels actually feels like Notion a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll show you guys the API docs and I'll put this link in the description below. So just go to this link and if you want, if you want to follow along and understand the thought process here, um, and it will lead you to this website. So when you get here, all of these are closed. Go to create new booking and then this will this is the this is the call the api call that we want to send in make.com to uh cal.com so that uh we can book an appointment into our calendar here so in this create new booking it actually does tell you the stuff that you need and in the av availabilities in the you get user availabilities tab here you can actually find out uh when we are available and then the response actually gives you the busy times um, and to get the availabilities, we need a couple of things. So we need the API key, uh, which we get in cal.com. And you also need the, it doesn't say so, but you need the type event type ID, and you do need one of these. So the username or the, um, so you need the username or the user ID. Uh, what I went with is the user ID, just because I got the numbers already from it. And to get those numbers, what we had to do was to do this first step. So this is 
This was step one. And to do this, what we have to do is make a get request to this endpoint, which was apicall.com slash schedules with our API key. And I'm gonna change all this. So uh, I'm just gonna change my API token after this. And then in this response, what we get is the, uh, we actually get our ID and we get our user ID and we don't have it here, but that is what we will be needing in a sec. So we need to make this call first to get all this, all this information here so that we can do our booking appointment and our, so to use our availabilities and our bookings. So what I then did is I jumped into Postman and in Postman, this is how it looks like. So I literally all I did is I typed in uh, this line here, put in my API key and then put the value in. And this is the response that I got. And then to make the call uh, to check all my availabilities, what we have to do is put in the API key, the user ID and the user ID we get from this line right here. So from our first scheduling call so this will be different for you guys and then the date from and this will i've played around with this it can actually also be this format which is 860 iso format or it can just be this format as well it works uh either way um, it does also give this output as well so just fyr this is the years this is the months this is the days hours minutes and then seconds and then the z uh the z actually stands for zulu and zulu uh, means utc time or universally central time something like that or greenwich which is zero basically and then after we've made this call what we want to do is in book an appointment so the line that we'll use is api.com slash v1 book and slash bookings and you still put your API key in here. Uh, you put your event type ID. Right, where do you get this from? Um, I might actually show you where you get the API key and the event ID in one go in a sec. Just go through this call in a, for now. So for the booking, we do actually need a few things. So to create a new booking, we need the API key, event type ID, the start date, the responses, the metadata, the time zone, and the language. That's the things that we need in the asterisks. All right, so anything else here, we actually don't even need to have an API call, uh, which is why I actually had it as a null, null, and then just accept it here. Right, so where do you get this event type ID? Let's now jump into uh, cal.com. And once you've logged into cal.com, you go into event types, you'll have uh, three things here like I do. I'll just rename this one to be called discovery call. And then when you go into edit here, so you click on the triple arrows, go edit. You actually get the number right here after the slash and before the question mark. That's the event type ID. So you need this. And this is what goes into the uh, event type ID. Uh, the start is whatever the start date the user chose, uh, whatever time they want to book at. Uh, then the th two things that we require is the name and the email. Uh, so it actually won't work if it doesn't grab this. Um, and for now, I just left the metadata empty and location. Uh, it actually does send a link. Yes, yeah, so it actually sends a link to your email as well. So yours and the callers. Uh, so discovery book between Henrik and Fred, and this gets sent to both people. And the link that you actually get is the uh, meeting URL to go into the cal.com version. So it's just like the Google Google Meet version of that. So what I might do is I might leave this part for later because it's already a pretty long video. Uh, so what I might do then is if you guys do actually want me to go through my make.com setup, please just leave a comment. Uh, below if you do if you would like me to do that uh, and then I can teach you guys how I how I got through all the different time zones and things like that uh, that was uh that was probably the time the most time consuming thing if you are a business owner looking to have something like this implemented you can find my calendly link in the description and if you are an AI agency owner 
and you are looking uh, to build something like this, I'm very happy to teach you. Uh, I am taking on a couple of students this month and I'm just helping out with low code stuff uh, or anything that you have trouble with. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents, and signing out.